What's up YouTube and Amazon, Jefferson here with the Starters page. And in this video, this is part two of my Feel World FW 759 seven inch slim HD video monitor. If you guys haven't seen part one of this review, make sure you guys click in the annotation right here and it would lead you to there. With that said, this is going to be a user interface slash menu and things around this monitor. So with that said, let's actually just get on to it. So we're gonna start off with the menu options. So right here below, you're presented with these buttons and I love how it's laid out. Me personally, this is all preference, but how it's actually labeled in here, it's very easy to actually just realize what they are and the buttons, at least, in my use, I've never had any issues pressing these buttons. Uh, you do have to press it pretty firm, but not to the point where it's really tight, so don't worry too much about that. So the first button right here is your mode, and that would actually toggle between your HDMI and AV connection. So when you press it, it goes from your HDMI right here, and then it goes to AV. So right now, it's plugged in via a mini HDMI to the Canon Rebel T2i. So let's actually make sure we're in HDMI, which we are. These two arrows right here, left and right arrow, that would actually, in the menu options after you go there, and we'll go there in a bit, that would help you go from left and right, obviously, hence the arrows. But at this current state, that would actually help you change the volume level. So pressing the left button would actually bring the volume down, as you guys can see, and holding it down would bring down the volume. I like that a lot. Uh, pressing the right arrow would actually bring the volume up and pressing and holding will raise the volume a lot faster, which is super awesome. Next is the menu button and that would obviously take you to your menu options right here. So the first one right here is actually your picture profile and things like that. So right now you have the picture mode, which is on standard. You have brightness, contrast, saturation and sharpness. F1 and F2 would also act as a up and down arrow. So when you press down, it would take you to the sub menus and pressing the left and right arrow would actually help you change the menu itself. So you have standard in picture mode, mild, user, and that's going to be your user preference that you put up. You have dynamic and then back to standard. So those are your options right there. Uh, next, we're gonna go down. Oh, sorry. So, next you have color temp and then you can just change it. Right now it's defaulted to 6500 and you can change it to 93, user, and then back to 6500. So when you go down, you have your tint level and you can just change the tint. And I'm just gonna leave everything as is right there. So that's pretty much it right there. To go back to the main menu right here, you wanna just press on the menu button once it would get away from that sub menu and then go back right here. So pressing the right button would help you go back to the, would help you go to the next menu options. So where the gear switch is, which is actually the menus, I guess, or settings per se. So pressing F1 will go down. First, you have your language down. You have your aspect ratio, and I have mine set to 16 by nine. Uh, the other aspect ratios are zoom one, Zoom 2, Just Scan, Panorama, Auto, 4x3, and 16x9, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that's really awesome, and I'll show you guys how they look like uh, towards the end when I turn on the camera. We're just gonna go through the menu options itself. Next, you have your no signal. So what, what color do you guys want displayed if it's not turned on or you have nothing connected with this monitor. Right now, I just had it defaulted to blue, but you could change it. Red, green, black, and white, which is, you know, all preference. Nothing too special right there. You have your OSD transmitter right here, and you could just turn that low, middle, high, and then back to off, and I just keep mine off. You have your OSDH right here. Mine's set to 50. Next, OSDV, mine's at 50 as well. You have your camera mode right here. It doesn't really do too much. Uh, right now, obviously, since my camera is turned off or it's not showing any signal, uh, you can't do anything right there. But let me just show you guys real quick. Let me just turn on the camera and then 
give it a second there you go so it detects it right there and then when you turn on camera mode it would toggle off right there and then you have different options for the camera mode so you have 480p the resolution and then you could change it to 1080i as well so it's pretty interesting uh do take note that it doesn't really cover the whole monitor right here at least the interface of the camera itself so you guys could see this right here is actually not in frame and then when you turn it off it just puts everything back in its own aspect i guess you guys could say so i actually keep mine defaulted to off right there so let me turn off the camera so we're not distracted all right so next you have zoom all you have your OSD time, which is 30 seconds defaulted. Your UD zoom, uh, your left and right zoom right here, USB upgrade, and your reset button right there. So that's pretty much it on the settings. So when you go back, it actually takes you back to the top. Press the menu button, and then let's go to this setting right here. So this one right here, uh, you could just turn these on and off. You could have all these presets to your function bar right here, and I'll show you guys that one right here in the functions tab. But in this one, you could turn on or off your center marks, safe frames, image freeze, image flip, check field, your P2P, focus assist and the focus assist in here it's quite interesting but me personally i i actually like it and i'll show you guys that one in a bit as well so that's it on that end uh let's go to the functions menu now so for the functions tab that actually will allow you to reset or change any of these functions right here so if for whatever reason i just kept everything to defaulted i just found it useful for me but right now f1 is actually check your fields and then that would allow you to check your blue green you know mono things like that uh your f2 is your focus assist f3 is set to center mark let me actually go back right there and f4 is safe frame so let me show you guys how they look like right now so that's pretty much it in the menus tab nothing too much but you have a good amount of um, options on there so right now f1 this is how the check field looks like so when you press that this is how oh i need to turn on the camera so let me turn on the camera now okay so now let me turn it on that's how it looks like with red on then green blue mono and then it turns off right there so if you just wanted to see how it looks like and check if the colors and everything are good that's the button that you want to press or that's where you could have it set i personally don't use that uh for what i do never really had the opportunity or need to actually check the fields on that end uh, i use the focus assist a lot which is the f2 button on mine so when you press f2 right there that's how it looks like when it turns when the focus assist is actually turned on everything turns monochromed and the way to know that you're in focus is actually red dots so i have this five in one beauty care massager right here and you guys could tell on frame sorry for the quality obviously i'm recording it on the monitor so it's not going to be as great but right now you guys could see it's just black and gray or gray itself and then when i change focus you guys could see that it actually turns on right there so which is pretty neat i like that a lot uh it's a good way to make sure and see um what you're focusing on perfectly in my opinion so it's a lot easier to actually see what you're focusing on since everything is grayed out and what is in focus is all red so the background right here as you guys could tell that's all red and if you want to focus in on the foreground you could change focus like that so i personally never had issues with that so it's pretty neat to turn it off you just press f2 and obviously all these menus are just all these menus are just right there they're not going to be alive when you record so don't worry about that all right so that's f2 uh f3 right here let me i this is the center mark right here so it just lets you know where your center is if for whatever reason your focus 
box is somewhere else and you just need assistance on that end. So that's pretty neat. And then F4 are your safe frames right here. So this is 85, 90, 93, 96. Uh, this is your 2.35 by one. That's your panoramic view. And then it turns off right there. So that's pretty much it for the buttons and menu layouts uh, on that end. Let me show you guys. I actually have this monitor on a magic arm, the Hogue or Hoagie magic arm. Uh, so right here on the side, I do cover this on my part one video, but on the side, I love how everything is just on the side. My personal preference, it helps keep everything clean because it's all on one side rather than having everything, you know, in one side right here and then you have a few cables in the other side. So I love that a lot. I did mention in part one of the video that I will talk about if you were to plug in these, uh, if you were to plug in an external speaker, which for example, I have this one right here. This is a Bluetooth speaker that you can actually amplify the built-in speaker if that's not sufficient enough. So let me actually record something for you guys and show you how it sounds like with the built-in speaker. Uh, the one thing I do wanna complain about this is that if for whatever reason you wanna play back the video, uh, going back to the playlist is actually, it takes pretty long and I'll show you guys after I record something. So let me record something right now. All right guys, so this is a quick test. I'm just using the built-in audio speaker on the Canon Rebel T2i. Hopefully you guys are able to see and hear what I'm saying. So with that said, let me turn it off and play it back. So that was just a quick demonstration right there. And then this is what I meant. So I'm gonna press the button now. So that's one thing that kind of grinds my gears. It takes a while to bring the playback menu on there. So, as you guys could see right there, let me play this. So that's how it sounds like right there. It's ridiculously loud, which I love a lot. Uh, but if you did need to amplify it, let me show you how it, if you were to plug in an external speaker, I have this external Bluetooth right here and I'm gonna show you guys how much louder it is. All you have to do is just get a regular auxiliary cable, plug it into where the headphones actually plugs in, which is quite interesting, but it's pretty neat. So plug that in right there and then I got this right here and if for whatever reason you don't believe this, I'll bring the speaker closer to my lavalier and then you guys will be able to tell. Let me record something right now. All right guys, so this is a quick test. I'm just using the built-in audio speaker on the Canon Rebel. That's just ridiculously loud right there. Definitely distorted the audio on my uh, lavalier. So that's how it sounds like, which is really awesome. That's perfect for events that you just want to, you know, share the playback, which is really, really awesome. Uh, I believe that's pretty much it. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. With that said, my name is Jefferson. This is the Feel World monitor, the seven inch slim monitor by Bella TV. Everything is in the description box below. If for whatever reason you're having trouble. Uh, with that said, my name is Jefferson. And like always guys and girls, take care.